Hi, I'm Mr. Miyagi and this is Mr. Miyagi's workshop. Well, I apologize for not putting out any videos lately. Uh, we were gone for about over three weeks. Uh, we went to Texas. We took a road trip in the old Delica, about 6,000 miles plus. We wanted to go down for Thanksgiving and hang out with our grandkids and our family down there which was a lot of fun, let me tell you. And we got to stop at a lot of cool places on the way. Now, I was going to do a video on that, but I don't know if that, you know, the road trip and whatever. Yeah, it could be okay. If you wanted to see it, I'll put something together. So you can always put a comment in the comment section below if, if you want to see that trip. But today, what we're doing is uh, we're going to upgrade the starter on the 1984 uh, shovel head. So basically this would be a stock starter and we're going to upgrade it to the 1.4k electric starter here. This is a modification you can buy to give you a little bit more horsepower for turning over. The 84 I own has a little bit more horses so it tends to drag on the old stock starter so let's get to it okay well you can see on this this starter right here this housing where all the gear and the, for uh, activating the bendix in it says so basically what we have done is that we've removed this starter from that housing now we're going to bolt this back up on there but there's some things that we have to take in consideration is where this post is going to end up. So you can see what they've done here is they, they have put different screw mounts in there. So you can twist this and put this in the right proper place. Because if you have it too low, it's going to short out on the transmission. If you have it too high, it's going to short out on the clutch arm. So anyway, what ends up happening is that we have to remove this front housing off of there and mount this first before mounting the starter itself. And it comes with a full set of instructions and the little screws to mount these little guys right here to mount this cap in place, the end of the transmission there. First off, I'm going to take this cover piece off here, which this says, Grease gear. Grease this before putting this back into place. Now, taking this apart, you want to be very, very careful so you don't screw up the starter taking it apart. Let me get this off there. All right. Now they suggest to hold it and remove it. And that's what I didn't want to do. Now, if that does happen to you, you're going to have to pull the nut off of, off of your uh, power source here and the two screws off the back side of this. Then another little trick is to take these bushings, these, uh, the bushings here, and slide them up till the springs catch the side. Now that'll hold everything up in place. But in the first place, you should have been more careful than, than I was. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so what we want to do now is we just want to push this down, these down and lock them in place on the armature all right being very careful now once again to slide this housing back on and put those screws back in place but make sure everything lines up first all right it's kind of nice too is that they have these little o-rings on the the back screws that seal this up quite well 
Yeah, even sometimes Mr. Miyagi screws up. And uh, the whole thing is not to get excited. All right, that's all working proper. So we put that back down on there. So now what we have going on here is that this is going to slide in, but let me see, show you here. Pop this housing off here and I'll show you what's going on. So what's going to happen is that this is going to slide in and this gets mounted to this unit. Now this unit is already on the motorcycle. So I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to line this up uh, with the mark. Now what I did is I followed the mark from where this post is going to be and marked it on this unit here. So, and off also on here to help me line everything up. Okay, I put a new lineup mark on uh, the new starter housing. So what you want to end up doing, that actually lines up with this little mark right here. There's a little uh, d detent that is supposed to fit in this area right here. So when you're putting it together, and there's actually two of them. So what I've lined up on this one here, and then when these screws come, come in, they'll pull everything together. So right now I'm going to go over and I'm going to install the two screws and line this up to make sure this is where I want it to be. Now there's a couple things we need to do. We'll uh, need to pull the ground on the battery and we'll need to pull the exhaust on this. So I'm going to get to that and then I'll be right back to you. Okay, so uh, I, you may or may not have a uh, rear mount for the starter, which has to be removed off of uh, the transmission and the back of the starter. So we'll start with that right now. Now it says with uh, the new starter, you don't have to put this mount back on. So we'll see. Yes, I did read the instructions somewhat. Didn't want to go too far. I do think that that uh, mount doesn't work is one of the reasons I think it's because the starter itself is a little bit shorter looking at the difference. We'll walk over to the other bench and uh, start looking at what we have to do. Now this also has a uh, grounding wire that goes to the relay so we'll have to disconnect that too and that will come off now we we'll may also just unplug this so we're not dealing with that in the way alrighty we also have a starter power line that we have to pull off over here too which can be a little bit more difficult to get off uh, so what I may end up doing is disconnecting that from the solenoid so I can get a little better approach to it so disconnected the wire off of the starter solenoid on the other side there so I could actually get a little bit more room uh, I've loosened up the nut on the post here where this goes and I'm going to work this all out of here. So that should slide off. I don't want to drop that locking washer. All right, so now we don't have to pull the whole entire um, unit off. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two stud bolts and we should be able to pull this whole unit right out of here. All right, these are 5 sixteenths, so we'll remove those. And that loosens up the whole starter assembly. We'll pull this loose. All right, so that's the complete starter right there. So you can see where I'm going to end up having to mount these back up in there. Uh, this unit just slides up in place there. Now also what I did while I had that out of there is I applied some grease on the starter gear inside. Okay, I kind of double checked everything. So I got this thing hopefully in the right position. I'm going to tighten this down. Now what I did up in there, those two screws, I torqued them down to 45 to 50 inch pounds. Now I'm also applying a little bit of grease on this uh, gear that goes in there, on the spline gear. So you want to be very, very careful putting this up in there. You want to kind of sort of line everything up. Now I have the two screws or bolts here. And we'll see if we can't get this to slide in. All right. Let's see if I can get this one to start. Some of this stuff, you're just kind of doing it blind. Let me get my light around here so I can see where I'm at. Oh, there it is. Off just a little bit. trick is to get that one that doesn't. The instructions I found out on this aren't the best. But uh, you just got to work with it, I guess. Just kind of work them back and forth as you're sliding into that housing. So one thing I'm, I really kind of don't like is the fact that this is pretty darn close in there. I wonder if I'm going to have to rotate that one click so it brings this down. Okay, well, here we go. Pulling this back out. So I'm going to move you out of the way so I can get to this. Yeah, the fun part was that in order to get that all out of there, it all I have to put it back together again. Yeah, it slipped off. So I'm going to drop this one more down. Yeah, in order to get this all together again, uh, I had to drop it one more time. I'm going to have to go back over there and put the bushings back in place and uh, so we can do that it's just you got to kind of play with it I guess and try to get everything lined up the way you want hey this is probably going to happen to you it's happened to me twice now so what we got to do is we've got to get these uh pushing back in and uh, out of the way. So what I'm doing here is I'm pushing these up and getting that spring. This is really difficult to film and to do. So what I've done is I'm hooking in behind this a little bit. And I'm bringing it up. So it catches it and holds it in place. So it holds it away from there. So when you slide it down, everything will slide together. Uh, the ones with the cloth on are the hardest because you've got kind of a short run there. You can, it won't flex as easy. 
So just be aware of that. And these are some tough springs. Also be aware of that. So I'm just hooking the backside of those springs and pushing that push out, which can be a bit of a hassle. There we go. Now I've caught all four of them. Very careful. Line this back up. So now I'm going to put the I'm going to put this in the vise, and I'll show you what we're going to do there. Right now we're just going to slide this back down on there. Now I had one of these slide out a little bit, but you could persuade it. One's easy to do. It's trying to do all four of them. All you really have to do now, once you get them into place, is just to push these past the spring and they'll lock back in and kind of center it up a little bit. Now to put this unit on, you want to line everything up. This goes back over that little sleeve area. And then we want to line up the screw holes. You may have to persuade it just a little bit to line the screws up, but uh, you just got to play with it. Tighten these back up. Be careful you don't strip them out. Get your control wire back on. Loosen this up a little bit. Make sure you line all this up, this gasket and everything. And that slides hopefully right back together. Yeah, there we go. So let's go put it in the bike. Okay, now what I did is I rotated that one, one screw hole down. So I just changed the screw holes one click. So it brings the terminal right here. Mrs. Miyagi sneaking in on me. Sorry. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to slide this back into place. And hopefully it'll all slide together. Kind of eyeballing the screws. Alignment. So once again, it's going to be the top one's an easy one to get to. Because you can see it a little easier. It's the lower one that uh, tends to be a bit on the tough side to get. And of course, I missed the hole. I have to move the light here a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Well, looks like I got it in. I think too now, once you've got, make sure everything is kind of lined up. You can tap that in place. And then that'll push that bearing back up in into its housing. And I like that alignment battery terminal for the starter much better. All right. So I may have to reroute the wire just a tad bit. All right. Uh, what I did is I uh, relocated uh, my uh, power source for the starter from the, the solenoid on the other side. I had to change it a little bit and get it around. They do suggest that you replace the battery cable, and I probably with a super flexible one would make it a little easier to go in there. One thing I am going to do is I am going to put uh, this back bracket back on because it basically holds the battery case. Um, there's no spot really for it to grab hold of where the starter is. All right. So, and I want to double check to make sure all my clearances are good. So, I will reuse this and bolt this back on and then put the exhaust system back on. One thing I did have to do uh, for this little relay, it needs a ground. So, I did ground, ground it to the, the starter plate. Um, so, uh, you do have to re-pull that screw out. And you want to make sure that you put the... Uh, the little uh, o-ring 
on the other side and slide it all the back together again so that it seals up quite nicely. So anyway, I'm going to get this all tightened up. Okay, well, let's see if we made a difference here. Whoa, that made a big difference. Definitely happy with that. That spins it right over. Before it just would lug through it. Holy moly. Now that was worth the money. Yeah, those starters are really nice. Uh, these are like a 0.8 torque starters, and that's a 1.4, and they make a big difference. One of the major things also you might want to keep in mind on it is that you need a battery with at least 300 uh, cranking um, hours on it to make it really work and then they also suggest that uh, you change out the starter solenoid uh, I have one on order it's stuck somewhere out there in the land nowadays trying to get parts sometimes can be a real pain in the butt as we all know but anyway um, and they also suggest that your battery cable instead of having the old six six gauge wire under go to a four gauge which is a little heavier wire if you were going to do that i would make sure that you got the the super flex kind uh, it's a little bit more pricey but it'd make your life a little bit easier feeding that through now i was able to that's a heavier line on mine but it's not the super flex I was able to get it routed properly through the system so that it'll work just fine. And you might be able to do the same thing. But uh, that starter solenoid seems to be working just fine. When the new one comes in, I'll change it out. Um, I could probably do a little short video on that just to show you what we have to do to get to that. Um, one thing though, like I had said, when you took, uh, take the battery cable off, make sure you tape that up. The, uh, the ground cable and just make sure that you don't spark or anything else uh, they kind of laying there loose could cause some problems but um, and once again I apologize for not putting out any videos lately but like I said uh, Mrs. Miyagi and I were on a uh, trip to Texas and had a wonderful time with the family down there plus doing a bit of camping uh, across the country. Uh, she, Mrs. Miyagi had to do a hike with her sister. Well, I don't say had to, but they wanted to. Uh, they did one of those REI women's hikes and that gave me four days to hang out in Arizona and go fishing. So that was kind of nice. And then uh, one of my favorite spots was in Utah was uh, the Pink Coral State Park. If you ever get a chance, make it down there. Don't try driving in the sand with uh, without the proper tires, though. Could get stuck. We didn't, because we didn't go in the sand. Um, but it's a beautiful area down there. You go, you can go through Zion Park to get there, or you can just take the 89 down. But it was a great time. So, if you like this episode on replacing your stock starter with a high torque, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that ringy dingy button up there for the next episode coming up. So this is Mr. Miyagi saying, be safe out there and hope to see you on the road. Ciao.